Good morning, everybody. Another Opticus Radicus tutorial, and this time we're going to be making a uh, cool little Lego guy with the regular Blender 2.64 internal rendering engine. This will be a three part series. We will cover modeling, uh, UV unwrapping, and texturing, as well as making an armature to control them so you can move around and make your own little Lego animations. Uh, Alright, so let's get started. Hey. Okay, this is my guy right here. Here's the rig. This will be in, in the uh, third part of the tutorial. See, it works pretty good. Nice stretchy legs, which you want. We're making good animation. He's got a little sword right there. Twist around and contorts however you want. Alright, so let's get started. Just gonna open up a brand new blend file here. All right. And one second, let me save this into our Lego Lego YouTube Tut. All right. So, uh, in anything, you want to have uh, some kind of a reference photo. It's not. Um, and I apologize if Blender crashes for some reason. Two point six four crashes when I use screencast, but I'm gonna. And there we go. <laughs> that was fast. All right. Mm. Let's see if we can have it not crash again. So you're gonna use, uh, <laughs> like I was saying, you're gonna use a background image a lot to uh, to help you model. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, all modelers do it, and you should too, because it just makes it makes the modeling process much easier. So I'm just going to go into my downloads. I'm loading a picture. I'll start over again. So I'm going to go into my press N to go into my menu right here, and then I'm going to the background images. Make sure that the checkbox is checked, and I'm going to go over right here to open. Um, I'm going to my downloads. I'm going to click this folder so all folders go away, and then I'm going to click on this little date icon up here, and that will uh, do it by date. So let's see. I downloaded this right here. I didn't use this to make mine, but we'll use this to make ours. Open the image. Um, make sure in the image right here, I'm just going to put on all views right now. Alright, so cool. Now we have our template. And what I'm going to do is just make sure that this is spaced evenly with, with our uh, blender bricks right here. So let's uh, hold down shift to make this smoother, to move it. I'm going to get in the center there, and then there we go. So now, see, we're uh, even with these bricks right here. So this is going to be a big model, but we can shrink them down. It's good for modeling right now. And I'm going to go ahead and move this to the... Oops. Can you do that? Hey. Sorry about that, guys. I press Control-Z, and it just uh, made that all go away. Uh, date, pictures downloads there we go go ahead all right that'll do let's bring it down here a little bit again bad all right so we'll start out with the uh, almighty square bring it over here uh, let's make sure because we're not that thick the scale it on the y-axis so s and then y and bring it in like that and now this scale it on the X, SX, and scale it on Z. So we're about right there. And grab Z and I'm just going to bring it down, go into wireframe mode. So now I'm simply going to select this top face right here, press 1 for my one view, and I'm just going to scale it, SX. And I have uh, this little magnet, this right here, this uh, proportional editing. Basically, what it does if it's if it's selected is it, is it affects the mo the mesh around whatever you're scaling or moving, which is handy for making um, a higher higher poly models. But we don't need it for this. So, got that right there. I'm gonna hit S X scale the X, and I'm gonna press G and Z and bring it down right there. So now we got a not bad body working out pretty good. So I'm gonna hit Tab, go back in Object Mode. I'm gonna hit Shift S, cursor to center. Sorry, Shift S, cursor just selected. And Shift A, I'm going to add another cube. I'm going to bring my cube down right here, grab Z. So my medium points are right in the center. 
I'm going to scale the z-axis, move it down a little bit, and scale the x-axis. All right, there, and you can see if you hit three to go to your three view, that we're a lot thicker than that, which you want to be a little bit thicker. But so you're going to go about right there. And you know what? I'm going to scale both of these on the y because we're a little bigger. You go over here. Sorry. If you grab it on the Y, you can see your uh, side thickness there. So, scale our Y right there. And scale our Y right there. Cool. Okay, go back to my one view. So, when you line it up in your different views, it's it's uh, it's right there. So, now we're, we're set. I have one, my front view. I have my front view. And three on the side. So, they're all set to model the heck out of this guy. So cool, it, that's the body pretty much done right there. So I'm going to select this cube right here, and I'm going to save like a parent person. Splendor crashes sometimes. I'm going to hit Shift S, cursor just selected. That just gets our square and everything close to where we want it to be. We don't have to move it around too much. So I'm going to hit uh, Shift A, add a cube, grab Z. We're only making one leg, and then we're just going to duplicate it. So grab X over here, scale the X, uh, scale the Z. Let's see, so this leg is actually two parts. It is a square and a sphere, and that I'm sorry, a square and a cylinder. So that's a cylinder. That's going to be a cylinder squished down, and then it's just a square right there. So, all right, let me go over here and to our three view and make sure that we're not super duper wide, which we are. Okay, cool, not too bad. I'm going to tab into edit mode and select this bottom face right here. I'm going to extrude it down along the z-axis right there. And then I'm going to extrude this out along the x-axis. Whoops, sorry. Extrude it along the y. Hey, there we go. We've got our one view looking good, three view, totally wrong direction. So I'll select this right here and I'll exclude it on the y. Exclude it on the y, excuse me. There we go. So. I'm now going to tab in edit mode. I'm going to put Shift S, cursor just selected. And what that does is it puts you in the center of the face right there, which I think is cool. And see, that is backwards from a very strange. Okay, don't worry about that for now. So, cursor is selected right there. So, I'm going to Shift A and I'm going to add, go into mesh, I'm going to add a cylinder. I'm going to rotate it on the Y. 90 degrees, and I'm going to scale it on the X. And then I'm just going to scale the whole thing in general. Move it up about there, and I'll go to my three view, and we'll kind of get this all set up like. So it's okay to have these objects overlap because when we uh, when we animate this, when these overlap, it'll it'll look good because they'll just follow up each other. Okay, so you see we've got to go up a little bit right there, so I'm going to tab into edit mode, control tab into vertex select, or you can just go down here and hit vertex select. Uh, make sure you use B and you don't just select it, because what it'll do is just select one side. So you want to select both sides of it, so just use B select or C select, whatever you whatever you uh, you like. And So I'm just going to grab this on the z-axis and just move that up to there for a nice smooth transition. Tab out of edit mode, save like a paranoid person. Scale it on the x-axis, right there, and that is, see, well, no, it's, that's all right, I can live with that, not too bad. And so I'm just going to uh, shift duplicate this right here, I'm going to grab it right there, scale the x, and grab on the z, go to my 3 for my side view, and we're still good because we use the same one. So if you go out of edit mode, he's got his little crotch area right there, Lego sack. Per se. <laughs> All right. So we have a leg right there and that right there. So I'm just gonna grab this. You know what? Here, let's uh let's stylize this real quick. So in Z mode, uh, the Lego guys are a little smoother than uh than this. So we of course will be using smooth shading, but I don't like how big that is. Here, right there. A little bit more. There we go. So you got you want to make these edges smooth, and uh, the best way to do that is to use a subdivision subdivision surface modifier. Um, so 
if we say went in right here, so a little branch, and we added a subdivision right now, it'd do that. And you're like, oh, I know. That might be a problem for a lot of you. And don't be scared of this. So you go in the edit mode right here, and what we're going to do is we're just going to use edge loops to make our... Okay, so control R, click in the center, and then drag this over to the side right there. Control R, again, drag in the center right there. And then you're going to want to do this on... Every edge needs an extra little loop right there. Let's do that to all of them. And up here for sure. So now, we got those nice rounded edges right there. That doesn't look too bad at all. We're going to be joining these two together, so it's really important that you apply this beforehand. So apply it there, and so now, if I hit, I select this, right, right clicking, and then I shift and right click this one, or you could border select both of them, whatever you want to do, and I'm hit control J, and that joins that together. So now, that is one piece. So if I go, uh, I know it's out of proportion, but it looks better than that does. I'm going to hit shift D, and grab it on the X, and move it over right there. And you can go into wireframe mode if that makes you feel better. Now if you look at this, it's not that bad. It's pretty high poly, but still not the end of the world. So we got our legs already. That was pretty fast. That's backwards because that is backwards to that view. We have to go into the opposite three view to make that line up. But don't worry about that at all because uh, it's a Lego guy. And he's pretty easy to make and move around. Cool. So that's the hardest part right there. Then we're going to go uh, click on this right here to, to get your head into position. I just control tab, select the face, shift S, cursor to selected, tab it at edit mode. Now I'm going to shift A and add a cylinder. My one view, I'm going to grab it up right there. I'm going to scale it to right here where the, uh, where, let me just add a grease layer layer here. Okay. So we're just going to add a uh, scale to like right there. We're going to scale that up. So that's cool. I'm just going to scale it overall, scale it back on the, on the z-axis. Go to my three mode so we're all lined up right there. I'm just going to tab in edit mode, select that face right there, screwed up, scale, screwed up, scale, screwed up, scale, and screwed up. Uh, same thing down here. Screwed down, scale. See, we could go all the way down. Yep. Screw it. I screwed and then scale that in like that and then screw down. And if that is too uh, small right there, I'm going to go into edge mode. I'm going to hold down Alt and select that ring right there. Go back in one view and just hit scale. That makes the neck. And then I'm going to do the same thing right here. Alt and select that edge loop. One, scale it. And the edge loop is a continuous loop. So if you went right here and say you went, let me just say it real quick. So you went like this. Okay, now I select, oh, sorry. Bad example. Basically, okay, so let me, let, me, let me show you like this. So if we connect it across right here, like that, hit enter. Now we went into face select mode and we, we did the same thing with the edge of loop. It'll stop right there because it's no longer a continuous loop. But these little edges right here are because there's nothing blocking those. But that's what an edge of loop is. When you hold down Alt, it selects an edge of loop till the edge of loop ends. And that's where it ended right there. Let me just get rid of that. So, sorry, I thought I'd explain that to you guys. Um, you're going to bring his neck in. We'll go into Z mode. Bring his neck down because you're going to be moving his head around and stuff, and uh, you don't want him to have, uh, you know, head detaching from the body itis, which is a painful disease in animation. All right, so that's not too bad. This guy right here. Let's try going into t press T to go in your toolbar and hit smooth shading. Yeah, that's going to work. That is definitely going to work. Save it. And let's make ourselves some arms. So the best way to get that arm and everything in position, and we will be using a cylinder, is a uh, tab into edit mode, face select, and I'll hit shift S, cursor selected. I like this; it saves a lot of uh, shift S technique because it saves a lot of guesswork and everything. So we got our cylinder right here. We grab on the x-axis, grab on the z. I'm going to rotate the y-axis. So uh, we'll say 90 degrees. So R Y. 90 for 90 degrees. I'm going to grab on the X. Let me see another mode. This one, 
also you want to take inside of it right there because you're moving it around and you don't want his arm to be detaching so I'm going to do the rest in edit mode here let's go into three mode and we'll scale this and bring it down and scale it a little bit so his arms and shoulder line up and tab into edit mode grab that face one back to that view right there. I'm going to grab it on the X right here and then I'm going to extrude. I'm going to rotate. I'm going to scale a little bit. I'm going to extrude, rotate, extrude, rotate, and I'm going to hit Control O to go into. Oh, let me start that over. Don't scale it. Let's grab it back here. Oops. Grab the X and we'll start our extrude in here. That'll make our lives easier. And see if we can't hit that angle. And we gotta start back here. Screwed, rotate, screwed, rotate, screwed, screwed, rotate, screwed, rotate, screwed, rotate. And I think I'll be scaling this. I'm gonna hit Shift R. Whoops. Screwed. And then Shift R, Shift R, Shift R. And I'm going to tab out of mode and I'm going to give this a good old scale. And grab X, scale there. And we'll get that arm lined up eventually. Screwed, screwed. It ain't perfect, but don't worry. And it's good to have all these loops in here. That doesn't hurt for right now because it lets the arm bend in a really gumby, soft fashion, which is cool. So tab out of mode. I'm going to go to my three view. And that arm's bent. Do not worry about that. Uh, we will be bending the arm with the armature. So don't worry about the arm being bent because then you'd have to rig it up in that position and it just generally doesn't work out good that way. And you know what? Scratch this. Bring the cursor back over there. Shift A. Add a cylinder. We're not even going to bend it right now. That's what I did in the last one. My bad. I'm rotate Y90. Got it right here. Scale the X. Well, we're just going to make his arms come straight out because we're going to be bent armature and that just uh, just messes things up you do it that way so it's just important to give this guy a lot of uh, images right there and so what we'll do to check our length is uh, just rotate it right here and with the shoulder and everything that's going to work out just right that'll come up to there so if you want to be exact about it you could uh, look at your image right here, we'll take on the opacity and you can see that we're across, we're about three blender units dangling across but I'm not too uh, picky on that as you see so I'm gonna control Z and rotate that and that'll work right now for the arm I'm gonna shift D duplicate it, press escape, I'm gonna rotate the Z a buck eighty and I'm gonna grab it on the X do it there and so, if we look in our three view, the Z, I'm going to grab it on the Y, bring it right here. Let's see, can I see my other? Grab it on the Y, I said, whoops, grab it on the Y, right there. So, proportionally, we're good. And so now, if you Z out edit mode, we got ourselves the making of a Lego. This uh, right here, let's try something. I've never done this before, so it's the first time for everything. I just made a cylinder, and I'm teeing the edit mode and cap fill type. I'm going to go to uh, and gone. And let's see what that does for me. Uh, Control R, edge of loop. That does nothing for me. <laughs> All right, we're going to be making this uh, these hands with a, a square. The best way to get a nice circular shape is to go, we'll go over here and we'll add a uh, shift A, add a cylinder, uh, rotate the X 90 degrees, grab it up here and scale it down and we'll be using this cylinder as a uh, reference point for modeling the square. So I'm going to shift S, cursor selected, shift A, add a cube, Grab the cube up here. I'm gonna scale the whole thing down. Grab on the Y so it's in front of this. 
and we're just going to keep scaling it. Come up here, and we'll be using the mirror modifier to make this guy uh, roll. So real quick, this will help us out. I'm going to grab this and just move it kind of to the center of this line right here. So this line right here will be our uh, center point. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to rotate it like that. There. Tab in edit mode. Select that face right there. And then a whole bunch of extruding. So extrude, rotate, uh, grab it on the z-axis. Uh, extrude, rotate, grab on the x. Z, extrude, rotate, grab on the x. Extrude, x, give it a rotate, screwed, rotate, screwed, grab an X, screwed, grab an X, rotate. I know it's really exciting. So now, we have a basic claw shape there. To that claw. We're going to go to our modifiers and go to uh, mirror. And let's we'll see if we can't find something that works for us. So Z, that's wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control A. And I'm going to set rotation and scale and apply location. And so, and then I'm going to hit Shift Control Alt C, origin to geometry. Now this should work. Okay, cool. That's what we want. Because this is the x axis, you hit x. That should be, that should where it should be mirrored. So what, before when I hit Z, that means it was all, when it was all confused in the in the internal. So I'm going to hit A. I'm in edit mode now, and I'm going to select everything. I'm just going to grab it on the x, and I'm going to take it to there. Now we don't need this. Uh, cylinder back here anymore so I'm gonna delete that and so cool you're like oh it's all parted up there what the heck man so one we're gonna set clipping right there two we're in control tab and go into vertex mode uh, A to unselect everything Z to go into wireframe mode and then I'm grab it on the X and just because you have clipping enabled it's just gonna snap and then now those things are connected together uh, same thing right here B select and now we have ourselves a claw, and you're like, hey, it looks all crappy. And smooth shade it. Um, that'll do for now. If if uh, that's not round enough for you, I'm just gonna apply this because we're not gonna be messing with it. Um, actually, oh, sorry, my bad. Let's go over here. You'll notice that they have a uh, kind of a more claw shaped in here. And it's also a lot thinner, so. Uh, I tried a, a couple different ways of moving this around. It's easiest just to go uh, vertex edge like this, a vertex, and it just makes instead of grabbing them all at once, it, it, it kind of creates more problems than it solves. I'm just grab Z, grab R, and then Z. So, like I said, if this is a now, now I'm going to apply this and save. Um, if that's not round enough for you, you can always do a subdivision. And if you do that, you're going to, of course, have to go in here and add edge loops to everything. And you know what? See, it has completely taken away my memory modifier. That's why I saved. Haha. <laughs> Control O. Got it. And took away my memory modifier. That's okay. So let me just continue with this. So I'm going to Z, A. I'm just going to delete this whole side. Since it is mirrored anyways, mirror it, we're back. Okay, and now I'm going to do subdivision without deleting that. So now everything we do on this side will be applied to that side. So that's, sorry, that was me giving you bad advice. So now you see that, we'll do the same thing. Add an edge loop, add an edge loop, uh, add an edge loop, add an edge loop. We're not getting our edge loops up here because that's where it's joining, that is very strange. See, it's not letting me do an edge loop, but we're going to bust out the knife tool. Our friend, enter, knife. And if you're wondering why that is, we're going to go up. There we go. Let's see here. We're having some major... So we just put the subsurf above. I think the mirror modifier should be above it, personally. Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to confirm no subsurf on this guy. Alright, good enough. <laughs> One, grab it on the Z, bring it over here, grab it on the X. We're going to spin the, uh, rotate the Y, I'm going to call negative 90. Ah. And then we're going to shift the escape, rotate the Z, buck 80, and grab it on the X and bring it over here. We are one view. T. A uh, cool trick: if you press Control and down, it'll make any screen that you have your mouse over uh, larger. See that? So it's a good way to make your workspace really efficient. Go up here. And before I do that, let's uh, let's check our proportions. Now it's looking thin, and also if we go to our seven view is way off. And I think this is a little bit smaller. We don't have a top view than his hand right there, so I'm just going to scale the Y there. I'm going to grab up on the Z. Not bad. Shift D again. Uh, rotate Z 180. Grab on the X. And there you go. So let's, uh, of course, make these smooth. Shading smooth. Shading smooth. Now, take into account that everything that you shade smooth uh, takes longer to render. All right. This guy right here, to make him so he bends and uh, moves around good, we gotta subdivide him. So, oh no, it's a circle. Uh, control R, edge loop, control R, edge loop, control R, edge loop. You get the deal. On all corners, there should be three like this. One, two, three. Control R, edge loop. Um, is that everybody? Yeah. All right. So, so we can bend. We're gonna give him uh, three sections here. So now he can bend around and move around, and it won't look too bad. And of course, let's give ourselves a center section. Go to my one view and make sure that we're dead in the center. This helps things look better. All right. And so now he's got that smooth, uh, polished Lego look. All right, there's the front side, and I'm not digging how that's out, so I'm gonna select just one, just whatever right there, and hit Control, Control L. Control L is cool, one of my favorite things. So if you add two objects together, and you're like, how do I just select that one object alone? It's Control and L. It'll select whatever vertice or face that's attached to. It'll select that entire object. So I, when I found that out, it changed my world. All right, I just want the circle to be shown right here, and not the leg. So got a little circleage and then of course you can also shade things smooth and flat in your edit mode so I'm going to select that, that, I should have done this before and then smooth and then this guy right here, zip ball sack and smooth shade it. Alright, so we're going to join these to see make sure, make sure that you have no uh, subdivisions before you join things because it will apply to everything so I'm just going to select both of these shift select and then control J those are one object, and then, hmm, I'm going to select these right here, uh, okay, so it's got a subsurf on it, I have to apply that before you would join this together, or it'll put a subsurf on everybody, so, this and this, control J, and there you go, we have ourselves a Lego dude, so let's take a look at, uh, let me get rid of the background image now, and click that. So let's hit A to select everything. Go to one view, grab it up. You should always have your stuff kind of centered on your axes. It just helps with uh, everything in modeling. If you were just somewhere, if you're modeling for uh, people, excuse me, one second, I have a sip of copy. Ah, excuse me. Um, if you're modeling a company for, like, for say, for somebody who's going to make an armature for an animation, they would make you do everything on the center axis just because it helps with when you add in armatures and just anything. It gives you kind of a, a, a mathematical basis point to uh, to do everything. So let's uh, shift S cursor to center, shift A, we're going to add ourselves in a camera. I'm going to hit Alt R, Alt G, that resets. Alt R resets uh, rotation, Alt G resets location. I think of Alt G like ground, reset ground, but 
So I'm going to grab it on the Y um, this way. I'm going to rotate my Z 180 so it brings that back around. I'm going to rotate my X. Excuse me. I'm going to rotate my X a negative 90 degrees. Now, how I like to make my setup, here, I'll, I'll get rid of this right here and this. How I like to make my setup is I always like to kind of be able to see what my camera is seeing. So over here, I'm just going to grab a little tab and bring that up. And I'm going to set that to a 3D view. And I'm going to hit zero right there. So now that's uh, that's my camera. So let me show you something. So we have two cameras right here, right? If you see this, this means when it's selected, when it's dark like that or yellow like that, it means that's your main camera. And if this right here, you're like, oh, what's up? I can't see out of it. You just hit control zero, and that makes that your main camera. But it won't change down here unless you go down here and hit control zero as well. So that switches your camera. You have to do it for both screens. They're independent. So we don't need that camera. Oh no, I can't see anything. Control zero. Over here, control zero. And this uh, this angle's not working right now for us just to get this picture of them. So we're going to go over to here and just on your X, just hit 720 and that'll make it nice and tall. And see that? We just need to go back on our Y, but we can tell where we are because we're a camera right there, which I think is cool. Uh, save it. Shift S, cursor to center. Shift A, add a plane. Scale the plane out like that. And you see, because we put we put everything on, on our lines right here, so when we add stuff from the center, it goes right to the bottom of his feet, which that's why we do it. And then, uh, so we have a cursor in the center right there, so I'm just going to shift A. I'm going to add a, uh, heck it, I'm going to add a sun. And I'm going to bring this back in the Y, and I'm going to rotate. I'm just going to hit R twice to give myself free rotation. And I'm going to hit F12, or whatever you want, and hit render up here. And uh, because that's the sun that's coming from the top right there, we have lots of shadows going on. So I'm just going to make my cursor down kind of below his face right there. I'm going to add a point. That looks like another sun to me. I'm going to add a point. There we go. Right there. And let's give that a look. And I'm not liking the sun right now. So we'll go traditional. One right there. One on our side. One on our side and one on our top. Not too bad. That's Lego Tastic. So we go over here, kind of ball material. This will give you a good idea and a good Lego y feel off the bat. Yeah, you know what? Here, we'll just use this one. So they're, all the same, so they're all the same color. I'm just going to go right here and call this uh, Lego Yellow. So that way, when I go right here, I just select Lego Yellow. And you just go right there and select Lego Yellow. And we're just going to make this uh, we're gonna make this black. Or almost black because that's a good start. And I'll do the same here. I'll call this Lego Black. Make a black, black. You get the idea. So now when we get a little picture, not too bad. It's uh, low resolution right here. So there we go. I can dig it. Not too bad at all. Got the arms. Everything's in place. We'll probably end up smooth shading the inside right there, and the outside probably as well, but not this uh this face right here because that'll uh, that'll make it look funny but what we have right here is a, a pretty good model right here it's nice low poly we don't have too many uh, edge loops in here you know and and basically these 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 vertexes all these vertexes right here they uh, they give us the ability to bend which uh, is good it's really good so you have to have those to be able to bend and move your armature so cool this concludes the uh, first tutorial right here for just making the model and uh, sit tight and I'll have the second tutorial for uh, UV unwrapping and uh, texture in this model to give it a little bit of a uh, style. Well, Thank you very much and I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something and uh, happy blending.